guys, my bird is out of the kiln. I put it in the kiln and I fired it. That means I baked it um, for a, quite a long time and now it has come out nice and hard um, and ready to be painted. So if you are gonna be painting your bird, you can use any paint, honestly. You can use watercolor, um, acrylic, you can use um, temper paint, whatever you want. We're actually gonna be using a really special paint that is just for clay and it is called glaze. Glaze is a very thick paint that's made of chemicals and minerals, and the colors that you get from them are very different from how they start to how they end. So let me show you what I mean. This color is actually red. Now to your eye, it might look kind of like almost like a pink color, very sort of light and pastel. But after we take this and we put it back in the kiln again, it's going to change color a little bit and texture. So instead of being this kind of chalky, um, dusty material that it looks like when it dries and instead of being this pale color it's going to come out bright and shiny so you can see how this is an example of what it will look like so it's very shiny uh, very smooth and it's super bright so the color is going to change dramatically um, so that is kind of a tricky part you have to sort of trust what the label is if it says it's red you have to trust that it's red even though it may not look like it because it will change Another thing you need to know is that when you're applying glaze, glaze is very thin and um, in order to make sure you have an even amount of paint on it, you have to paint it actually three times, three coats of paint for every color you do. So this is an example, you can see what it looks like. So on this um, piece of clay, I painted with my red paint one time, one coat, and you can see when I shine it in the light that it's not very shiny at all. In fact, it's also very um, pale as well two coats starts getting a little shiny but it's still a little bit rough in some parts and still a little light and patchy three coats is when it starts getting really smooth and shiny and very dark so i just want to make sure you know that if you are glazing you need to glaze it more than one time you need to do it at least three times more than three times isn't going to hurt it i wouldn't go more than maybe five that's going to get to be a little too sloppy and messy okay now we're ready to start painting our bird. So the thing we're going to paint are actually the details. We're gonna be painting the eyes and the beaks first because we wanna make sure that those details get done really nicely before we do the huge massive color that we choose for our background of our bird. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create white eyeballs with a black center. So you're gonna need white and black. If you wanna go with different colors, that's fine. But if you want those eyeballs to pop out, white are gonna be their best choice. You're gonna need some water and you're going to need brushes, of course, as well. So I'm gonna open up my white glaze. I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna mix it up. Sometimes after sitting there for a while, it can get a little bit um, chunky. I'm going to take my white glaze and I'm going to paint right on top of where I want things to be white. Now a lot of times people say, why on earth am I painting something white? The clay is already white right now. That may be true, but um, if I leave it this way, it's going to stay dry and rough like this. If I want it to be shiny and really bright white, then I need to actually paint it white. So I'm going to paint the eyeballs first and I'm not worrying too much that I got a little paint outside of my lines. If I am worried about that, I can always grab a smaller brush or I can try to wipe it off later. After glaze dries, you, you can always take a wet paper towel and dry it off and wipe it off. That's totally fine. All right, so I painted it one time. And one thing you're gonna notice is that glaze does dry pretty quickly. So it doesn't take very long for you to be able to do your second coat. So anytime you're painting with glaze, it's always a good idea to do one color at a time. Um, the reason for doing one color at a time is to make sure that you are doing the right amount of coats so that you don't lose track. If I was to go from white to another color, back to another color, back to white again, I might start forgetting what coat I am on, like how many times I've painted it. And so doing it one at a time is really gonna help me concentrate on what I'm doing. Um, now after doing the second time, it takes a little bit longer to dry. So I'm gonna sit here for maybe 30 seconds or so. been uh, about 30 seconds so now I'm going to paint my last coat of the white paint 
and then I'm all done with my white. Unless there's a place on this bird, I still want it to be white. I'm going to be done with my white. Whenever you're done with a color, you want to take your brush and make sure you clean it really, really, really good. It means make sure you can feel the bottom of the cup as you're pushing down so that you can make sure those bristles are really getting spread out and cleaned well. Then you can dry your brush off before you get to your next color. You don't want to dump it back in with all the water. It can really compromise your paint and make it very runny. So I'm going to take this and just wipe it on my placemat um, to dry it off. But you can also use a paper towel, a tissue, something like that. All right, now I'm ready to do the black center of my eyes. So I'm just going to take a small brush, dip it in the black, and I'm not really going to do much in the way of painting. I'm just going to drop it right on top, just like that. I'm going to take it and just drop it, just sort of tap it once. And that's about it. Um, in fact, when you do it that way, sometimes one or two times is enough, not necessarily even three. Black is it. I'm going to drop it one more time on each side, and that should be good. Normally, like I said, you want to do it three times, but colors like black are very dark colors, and a lot of times just doing um, really thick layer of paint can be just as good as doing it three times. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is the beak. I'm going to decide what color I want for the beak. Um, most birds you would imagine have sort of an orange or yellow color. A lot of people like to go with those colors. I think I'm going to do one of those as well. I think I'm actually going to go with a yellow color. So I'm going to take the yellow out and I'm going to dip my brush into the yellow and I'm going to paint this beak. Did it one time. Notice how I'm holding the bird with one hand and I'm painting with the other. I could leave it on the table and paint. The problem with that is I can't see underneath and I can't see what spots I may have missed. So holding it in your hand very carefully over the table. So if it drops, it just drops on the table, not on the floor. And looking at it from multiple angles as you paint is a really great idea and a really great great way to make sure that you're not missing any spots as you're painting. So this is my second coat. Again, the first coat dried real fast. The second coat's going to take a good bit longer to dry. As soon as that's done, I'm going to do a third one and then we're going to be ready to do the body. I've done the eyes and the beak, my details. Now I'm ready to do my body. Now you could choose to do more than one color for your body, um, but I'm gonna choose just one solid color because I want to really play with fun colors with my legs and my wings, which remember, we're gonna be using different materials for those things. So I think I'm gonna have the body just be one solid color. Again, if you have an idea for maybe using a couple colors, that's fine. I'm just gonna use one solid color for now. So I'm gonna choose to use red, and I'm gonna do the same process that I've done for the eyes and the beak. Now the one thing I want to be careful of is not to fill in my holes too much with glaze. Um, otherwise we won't have holes left to our feathers and other things into. So just be careful about painting inside the holes. Try to leave the holes empty if you can. And then so don't worry about paint, don't paint the very bottom right here. Okay, so this rim area. The reason why we don't want to do that is we're gonna be putting this on a shelf in the kiln and when the glaze gets really hot it gets very sticky and then when it dries it hardens so if we put glaze on the bottom where it's gonna be touching the surface once it's fired and gets really hot it's going to get sticky and stick to the kiln and then when I try to pull it off it's not going to come off it's gonna be hard and stuck so just don't paint right here did one coat all over my bird and you'll notice that I did put some right on the eyeballs that's because if you remember I actually made eyelids now if you didn't make eyelids but you like the way this looks right now you can always do that to your own you can just add a stripe of color to it and you can turn it into eyelids the only thing I did was to make sure I'm going really carefully around the eyes and the mouth so that I hopefully don't mess up the colors that I already did there um, so that they stay kind of looking nice all right, as you can see, it already dried on many parts of it. So that's my first coat. I'm ready to do my second. All right, 
two coats done. Now I'm going to be waiting for my third. The other thing you can do is what I'm doing, which is putting my fingers inside of the bird since it is hollow. And what I'm actually doing with my fingers to make sure they don't it doesn't fall off is I'm spreading my fingers out. So the fingers are inside and I'm actually doing this with them. I'm spreading them out. You just probably can't tell that's what I'm doing, but I'm doing that so that I can brace it and make sure that it doesn't move and fall off of my hand. So I'm just going to be waiting for a few more seconds for this to dry up. I can see that there are some spots that have already dried up really nicely from my second layer and I just have a few more shiny spots that just need a little bit more drying before I do my third layer. finish my third layer. Every single color on my bird has three layers to it. Everything's looking thick and really nice. Now, I could either stop here and say, yep, I'm done. I wanted a red bird. I'm happy with my red bird and I'm finished. Or this is the time I could go in with maybe a second color. Maybe I want to put some stripes on my bird's body. Maybe I want to do some polka dots on my bird's body. There are any number of things I could decide to do to sort of make this bird a little bit more fun and unique. Or I can leave it a total solid color and that's fine too. Remember if you are going to do a second color on top of another color, you have to make sure that first color is totally dry. If it's not totally dry, like if I start using yellow right now and the red is still wet, I'm going to get red all over my brush and when I dip it back into my yellow, it's going to get my yellow really gunked up and messy. So we don't want that to happen. So you do have to make sure that this is totally, totally dry before you do any other colors on top of it or any other details. All right, when you're all done, let this dry and then we're going to be putting it in the kiln again and seeing how beautifully shiny it's going to come out and that's when we're going to do our final touches. Finished bird all out of the kiln, glazed and ready to go for the next step. I made sure I had at least three coats on there uh, so it's nice and shiny and bright. Um, I also made sure that I did not fill up my holes because we are going to be using those today to finish up our bird. So once you have your bird in your hand, the other items you need to finish this off are a few feathers for wings and for a top feather if you chose to have one. And you're going to need some pipe cleaners. Pipe cleaners are basically wire that has been surrounded with soft, fuzzy, colorful uh, material. And it's very bendable and easy to play around with. Now this was actually one long piece. And what I did was I snipped it in half with a strong pair of scissors or you can use wire cutters to make two pieces that um, I thought would be good for legs. Now, before we make these into legs, we're going to have to fold them into the shape that we want. So I'm gonna show you very carefully, one at a time, how to do that. In fact, I think I'm going to zoom in so you can see this clearer. Okay, you're gonna take your first piece and what you're going to do is bend down one end of it just a little bit. Bend it just a little ways like that, just a tiny little bit. Okay, then I'm going to take this longer piece and I'm going to fold it up and I'm going to try to make it about even with where I just went. And now if I separate it, it looks like a little Y. See how it looks like a little letter Y? So once again, the way we did that, and I'll show you again on this one, is you took the little, a little bit of an end and you fold it down and then you take the bigger side and you fold it up, trying to match the same amount that you did there and separate. If it's not exactly the same, it's okay. But again, here's our little letter Y's, okay? Now, if you want a two-toed two bird, you could just call these legs right now, but we're gonna do a three-toed little bird. Then we're gonna finish it up. You're gonna take your one hand and pinch it right at the bottom of the Y, so it looks like a little V, and I'm going to take my other finger holding the long end and I'm going to push and lift it up. But it's going to be kind of leaning on that finger. And I want it to be right in the middle of that little Y shape. And then I'm going to take my finger and pinch it right where the two ends are ended. And I'm going to take that big piece and with my other finger I'm going to push down and pinch. 
pinch, pinch, pinch to flatten. And now I've got three little toes and a nice long little leg. And that's going to be one of my legs. So let me show you again how we did this. I'm going to start all the way over again. So I have one leg done. So we're going to do this again. We're going to take the top piece and we're going to bend it down. There's no rule of how long or short this part, this little piece needs to be. Um, but I would go with a little shorter instead of longer just to make sure you have plenty of leg left. Pinch right where I ended and bring the long piece up and that creates a Y. You can sort of separate it so it looks like the letter Y. Let's turn it this way so we can see how it looks like the letter Y. And now I'm going to take my fingers again and pinch at the bottom right where they meet. And that's going to help my thumb stop this big piece as I lift it up. So I'm going to lift it up, pinch to flatten, and then right where I want to fold it down, I'm going to try to do it right where these ones end, right there. So I'm going to pinch right there. I'm going to fold back down again and pinch again to flatten everything. And there we have our little three-toed leg. Okay, if they're a little bit different lengths, that's okay. No big deal. You can either try to refold to make them the same length or you can just not worry about it and let them be a little bit different. That's kind of fine. These are funny little fantasy birds, so they're not really meant to be especially realistic. They're supposed to just kind of be funny, cartoony looking little birds. So that's how we're doing our legs. So once you have some legs and you have your feathers that you need, we're going to be hot gluing them into our little hole spaces, okay? Hot glue is the best type of glue to use only because it's very strong, it dries very fast, and um, you don't need to hold anything in place for too long to make sure that it'll stay that way. But if you don't have hot glue um, available to you, you can use regular glue or any other super glue. Um, those things will work too, it's just the dry time is gonna be a little bit longer. All right, let's zoom out so we can see what we're doing. All right, here's my glue gun, and I'm going to start gluing some things in place. The first thing I'm going to glue is the top feather in. So I'm going to take my glue, hot glue gun, and I'm going to just put a little dollop of glue right in that hole. Take whatever color I wanted from my top feather and stick it directly inside. Making sure I've had it turned to whatever direction I want, but you've got to make that decision pretty fast because it pretty much stays in place pretty quickly. Now I'm going to do one wing. Again, put a little dollop of hot glue inside. And it's starting to look a lot more like a bird now. Now I just have to get my legs inside there. So same process. Now, we don't want to touch these right away because we do want to give them time to dry. It, like I said, it is a quick dry time, but you don't want to be bending and pulling at the legs until it's totally dry. Once it's dry though, you can bend these legs, have them go in whatever direction you want. You can have them crisscross. You can hang it off the ledge of a table and have the legs hang down, one leg on top of another leg. You can do all sorts of funny little things with posing your bird for decoration. Hope you guys had fun making this bird with me. Um, I cannot wait to see what colors you chose, what facial expressions you chose, and how your bird is going to be decorated.